Hey everyone! Welcome to episode 3 of my Hardcore But Cottagecore series. In the last episode, we built up two beautiful and useful farms for all of the crops and iron. Speaking of which, we should probably check how much iron we have from just working on the pathways around here. Oh wow, this is a ton of iron! This is amazing! And we're gonna use this iron to upgrade our gear today. I know what you're thinking, but Frog, you have iron gear. How can you upgrade with iron? But I have a plan, so let's get started. The plan's gonna require all these different workstations, a single jack-o'-lantern, nice, and all of these crops. And if you haven't already guessed it, we are making a villager breeder today. Villager mechanics are extremely overpowered in Minecraft and in hardcore especially, it's going to be so easy for us to get full diamond armor and diamond tools without setting a foot in the caves. And for those who don't remember, we found an ancient city in our diamond mine when we were mining in the first episode, so I'm not going back down there right now. I'm just going to run over some essentials to the village over here because we locked up some guys in a house in episode one. Hopefully they're still here and they didn't die somehow. Okay, here's the house. Hello? Okay, awesome. They're still alive. They're still in there. Perfect. We can kind of make a cave over there behind the house into the mountain. Let's just drop everything that we don't need and we'll bring all of the stuff that we do need over here really fast before we start building up the breeder. When I see this view, I am so excited to keep building in this world. It's going to look so awesome. Also, just wanted to mention that we just passed day 100 in this world. We're on day 107. Let's go! That's why I've never made a 100 day series though, because I work so slow. Even though we're not going to see the breeder that much, I kind of want to decorate the inside of it a little bit. And yeah, we're probably going to need spruce. Also for stick trades. One last thing I needed to gather before I started the breeder was gathering up some sand for glass. And a lot of this part is going to be replay mod heavy because I was live streaming over on Twitch. So apologies in advance. We started off by mining out the area for the cave where the villager breeder was going to be going. And we left enough space that we could easily walk around each of the sides. Then we laid all of the dirt down for our crop patch in the middle. We tilled the land and planted our carrots. And then I started to get the design for the walls of the farm in. Once the villagers were in, I immediately gave them some bread and they actually immediately had a baby, which I've never had happen to me before. And after that, we worked on the collection system for the villagers and this railway gave me way more of a headache than I want to admit. And just pressing the button to make sure that this is gonna work. Yes, let's go. While we get the walls in, I just want to quickly say thank you guys so much for all the support on the Hardcore series and thank you so much for your patience with all the health problems and everything I had over the summer. Luckily, I'm mostly better now and able to work on videos again and we also found a spider spawner right behind our villager breeder. And once we added all the details in, we had a really lush looking beautiful villager breeder. Just taking a quick look around and it is looking amazing. These little built-ins we put on the side for some lighting and detail are my favorite. Now, the spider spawner didn't have that much good loot, just kind of like a saddle and stuff, but that's okay because we can still turn this into an XP farm. Pretend we do not see this unfinished staircase. But we have lots of villagers down here already, and the next step in the process is going to be to mine out a little tunnel here to get some trading started. I'm not going to focus on aesthetics for mining out the tunnel because the villagers are not going to stay there forever, I promise. I always feel really bad mining out a long tunnel and then putting villagers into these like two by one pods, but you know what? Anything for the diamond armor. I first traded with Fletchers to get emeralds, taking those emeralds and trading them with the toolsmith, and then using our iron for more emeralds and to level his trades. Oh yeah, by the way, did I mention we have a beacon's worth of iron to trade? I'm not going to make you watch boring villager trading. I'll bring you back once we have everything all set up. Several boring minutes later. This villager has a full set of diamond armor for us to trade now. Let's go. Not the best in chance, but... Honestly, I don't even really think that matters. We have 42 levels and we can always use the enchant table back at our house. The other villagers that we have have diamond tools and weapons, which is really good. And we got a perfect farmer. Back at the base, I think we can display our iron armor because it did last us our first 100 days in this world. Now I'm going to disenchant the armor we just bought. And then piece by piece, I re-enchanted my new gear and got some pretty decent enchantments. This pickaxe in particular is amazing, but my helmet is lacking. I need to get more XP so I can do that again. 
And this process led us to trading with our villagers once again for more emeralds and XP. Alright, let's get something good here. Oh! This actually makes up for the bad luck that I've had with the helmet. But look, alright? All of these trades, they're not enough. I want one emerald trades, okay? I'm selfish. And to get those one emerald trades, we're gonna need to go to the nether, capture a zombie, and brew up some potions. I remember looting a rune portal over here that was basically only a couple of obsidian away from being completed, and I think the obsidian we need is in the chest. Now that I'm wandering through this savanna, I actually think that this nether portal is going to be impractical, but whatever. It is what it is. I think in the future I'm going to move this. And I was right, the nether portal only needed two pieces, we just had to remove some crying obsidian first. Let's just go in. Oh. Oh, I don't like this spawn. What is this? Surrounded by lava lakes on all sides, crimson forest. What a terrible spawn. There's another fortress over there. Oh no! Go away. No one likes you! Well, we're gonna bridge over to that nether fortress. Over the lava lake. Probably through the wall too. I'm trying to stay pretty high up in the air so I don't have to fight any more of those hoglins or any piglins because I forgot gold. And luckily creating a little pathway is pretty easy. Okay, here we are. Just gotta jump over down there. Let's make a little escape route actually, just in case. The main thing that we're gonna be looking for in this fortress is blazes. We need blaze rods to power our brewing stand. It would also be ideal if we could find some nether wart. That way we could not have to worry about that ever again. Wait, blaze? Oh gosh, okay. Fix that and then blaze. This is gonna be easy, I got this. Ooh, blaze rod. Now, ideally we'd be able to find at least a couple more. That way we don't have to come back here for a while. Oh, I didn't come emotionally prepared for wither skeletons. Let's just block them off and kill them that way. I'm not a coward. I took out some more wither skellies in the same way. And then I looted my first chest, which had a diamond and nether wart. I killed another blaze and got another blaze rod. And then this blaze also dropped one, which made me three for three. I opened up a few more chests full of lots of different treasures in the nether fortress. And then I finally found the nether wart and soul sand and I grabbed as much as I could. And you know, as much as I love hanging out in this fiery hellscape, I'm gonna go home. We got what we came for. It is time to get safe and get out of here. Oh, finally, here's the portal. I'm just gonna run through, I don't care. I don't care about anything. Whew, back on the other side and... Oh my gosh, I think that was a regular piglin. It became a zombie piglin in the overworld. Well, sucks to suck, buddy. And mission accomplished. We have our blaze rods so we can start setting up a zombification chamber to zombify our villagers. I wasn't thinking of this while I was in the nether, but we are gonna need gold to make golden apples. Oh, this is not a lot. We're also gonna need a name tag and some brown mushrooms. Do we have any? No, we don't. Well, we're gonna go to that dark oak forest that we found before, and it was only like one brown mushroom that I saw there, so we're just gonna go grab what we can. I think this is one of the smallest dark oak forests that I've ever seen in my life. And I only see red mushroom. Wait, is that a brown mushroom there? There we go, okay. And there's one by itself. Okay. My shovel is the only thing I have that has fortune on it. It's only fortune one. So I hope that we get a bunch of mushrooms to take home and grow ourselves. We got eight from that mushroom and I'm gonna silk touch this one. That way when I get fortune three, I can just easily fortune three all of them and hopefully get a lot more. We'll do the same thing here with the red mushroom and we'll take it so we can use it for later. Now we make the long trek home. I think I took a wrong turn somewhere and Look at these guys, there's a trident guy over there. They're all spawning on land, what? I was just looking, I wasn't gonna take it. I was just looking. Gosh, I love the night sky and these shaders. Once we were back home safe, we started to work on the area for the zombie conversion chamber. 
And while I was putting in the area for the zombie, I realized we had no way to get a zombie in, so I dug a pathway up to the surface. We fished for a name tag. <gasps> name tag! Let's go! Then it was time to once again use ourselves as bait to get a zombie and hopefully not die to any other mobs. And after a short battle with a spider and a creeper, I finally got a zombie to follow me up to the path. And once I got him down the staircase, I realized I hadn't thought of how I was going to get him trapped. But after some quick thinking, we were able to dig behind him and above him and trap him in there for good. I'll link the tutorial for the conversion area design that I used, but this is stinky. Everyone meets stinky. I live streamed rolling all these villagers just because I think it's really boring. So I've got some sharpness five for one, efficiency five for one as well. And if you don't want to miss out on anything, make sure you follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash frogcrafting. I'm going to continue trying to get some more enchants like protection and mending. We don't have either of those yet. So some more off camera villager rolling. I do actually also want to build something this episode and I was thinking about adding a blacksmith over here in this area. I'm going to clear out some of these trees and the reason I want to build a blacksmith is because I want to build a super smelter in Minecraft. I've never had a super smelter array before. As I want this world to be super long term and super useful in all ways, I'm going to try to build as many farms and contraptions as we can every episode. You know, on top of building also beautiful and stunning buildings. The grind for functional aesthetics never stops and this blacksmith is going to be no exception. I want this new build to match the other builds in the area, so I'm going to need a bunch of mangrove wood. At this point, I think I've chopped down like five or six trees and I don't even think I have a stack yet. It takes so long to get. Okay, after finishing that, we have a just over a stack and a whole inventory of just garbage. I'm going to take all the leaves home and turn them into bone meal and then continue grinding the mangrove wood over by our house. They should have called it grind grove wood because it is a uh it's a nightmare nothing to see here i just wanted to give you some spruce asmr i was climbing this hill behind my house to get some coal for the project and i hear zombies so either a cave is here or there's maybe a spawner oh yeah it's a spawner looks like a zombie spawner okay a chest well, that's kind of weird there are no chests down there that are visible i'm not gonna go in there now but this is good to note for later let's put a let's put a lantern here and now to gather the coal that i came up here for Ooh, some iron why am i getting this we have an iron farm Hey, red-eyed evil looking bunny. Want a golden carrot? Yeah, I'm just gonna sleep. Oh, well, it's your bed now. All right, you can have the bed. I'm not scared. You can just have it. I dug out this whole path for you. Can you give me your horn? Yes. Oh, I don't like this one. <laughs> All right, I think it's finally time to start building. I've got all the materials we're going to need to build this entire thing. And yeah, I'm ready. So let's roll the time lapse. I wanted this to be a smaller, more simple build. So I skipped out on actually building a second floor and I kept it all on one level. I brought in the stones that we use in the bottom of our other pallets as the base. And instead of using birch, I used diorite, calcite and polished diorite. I love deep slate so much and I never have the chance to use it. So I brought it in here for the forge chimney and I really love how much contrast it adds to the build. And then for the roof, we use some spruce and some mangrove to complement the dark oak. This wasn't originally part of the plan, but I think I'm going to add a tower here to balance out the chimney of the forge over there. Speaking of forge, we gotta have our lava there and oh, that looks cool. Okay, back to building. I forgot to make concrete for my flag that's gonna go on top of the tower. I only need three pieces, but we'll make the whole eight. This flag is super inspired by Infinite Drift from her Bloodline series. So thank you for the inspiration, Drift. Oh, it looks so cute. I love it. 
It does need some details though, so I'm gonna work on those before we start the smelter on the inside. All right, time for a quick peek because the details are in. I added a bunch of window treatments, flowers, all that stuff, and we added a trim around the bottom where the stone meets the diorite. I love the tower so much. I think it was such a good addition to this build. The tower does need some light here. Oh, maybe one more up. That way you can see it from the windows. I think that's gonna look really nice. Now the inside does still need some work, so I'm gonna take care of that and then I'll bring you back one more time for the grand reveal of everything all together. Okay, if you're ready to see, I'm ready to show it finally. This is my take on a little cottagecore blacksmith's house with a tower and a whole forge and a super smelter inside. I created a pathway here through the wheat field and you can access it from multiple different sides, which is nice. And there's even a little pathway over here to like a coal storage area because you know you're gonna need a lot of fuel for that forge you know if you don't count the lava but anyways inside inside we have a smithing area with some armor stands i still need to get some armor for those but we have lots of smithing tables storage raw iron anvils all that stuff and then down the hallway we have our furnace array and it's completely automatic or it should be i haven't actually tested it out yet i probably should have done that let's break down this coal and add it into the mine carts with the iron and then let's see if this is gonna work all right coal's in let's put all the iron in here and then we should be able to just flip the switch oh it's turning on it's so cool it's all making it into the last furnace. That's really good. Now let's check all the other ones just to make sure. Yep, yep. And it's making it into the chest too. Let's go. And that's going to be it for today. We upgraded our armor. We got some really good tools from our villagers. And we built this amazing blacksmith. And we made a zombification chamber for our villagers to get really cheap trades. I just want to quickly say once again, thank you so much for your patience with this episode. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys in episode four. Bye.